Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? I get a couple thumbs up. Okay, great. Great. Okay, thank you so much. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. We have a lot of material to cover, so if I'm going too quickly, let me know to slow down. Um, so just a little bit about TASC and who we are. We are a parent training and information center that serves all ages and all abilities. We serve six counties in Southern California, which include Orange, Riverside, San Diego, Imperial, Los Angeles, and Ventura. Uh, I provided a list of some of the services that we offer. Basically, since we're a parent training and information center, our number one service that we offer is training and information for parents, caregivers, professionals, and of course consumers. Uh, there's a long list of other things that we do. Uh, the other main thing we do is one-on-one -on -one phone calls. All of our advocates here, I'm sorry, we just changed their name to Family Support Specialists. Uh, they are all parents of children with special needs or have special needs themselves. Uh, we do um, help both parents and professionals and, adult, and also adult consumers. We have a huge resource database that you can call and get referrals to other agencies and services. And then we have our technology centers in both Anaheim and Southgate. <clears throat> our tech centers offer many services. Our number one service is our individualized lab appointments which is basically a one-hour appointment where you can come in and try different technologies depending on what you're looking for. We also provide assistive technology and augmentative and alternative communication consultations as well as clinics and a lot of other services. Um, our newest service that we're really excited about is um, the Voice Options Pilot Program. And most of you probably already know about it, but if you don't, um, the CFILC is facilitating this through the California Public Utilities Commission. And it's basically a way for Californians with speech disabilities to try iPads with specific AAC apps on them. After they've had a demonstration and a trial, they can then borrow the iPad with the apps on it for um, 14 to 30 days. And if successful, then they can apply for a long-term loan with the, of an iPad and the app that they choose. For more options, you want to visit voiceoptions.org for more information or go ahead and give me an email, send me an email, which I will give you at the end. Okay, so what is assistive technology? Well, it's basically an umbrella term that includes assistive, adaptive, and rehabilitative devices for people with disabilities. And it also includes the process used in selecting, locating, and using them. Okay, some of the types of assistive technology we will discuss today will include low-tech items, aids for daily living, computer-based support such as software extensions um, and online resources, and then finally uh, applications for both iDevice and Android. Okay, well I'm going to start with low tech. And on a webinar, it's kind of strange because I usually pass around my low tech, so I'm going to just describe a couple of the things that are on this slide. Uh, first of all, it's the twist and write pencil. It's kind of a U-shaped or a wishbone-shaped pencil at the top. And then it just goes down into a point. You insert your finger uh, through the U-shape, and it uh, helps with writing uh, more ergonomically, and it's a lot easier to control. 
the um, other picture on the slide is the voice cue queuing device by attainment company and you can set um, up to five um, alarms basically that uh, in your own voice that you can say um, you know time to take your medicine get up don't forget to take a break that sort of thing <clears throat> um, some more light or low tech options include other adapted pencils and pens. Um, writing guides are helpful for those with uh, physical disabilities or vision impairments. And they can include um, guides that help sign you know, uh, templates so you can sign and fill out checks or fill out specific lines on paperwork or envelopes, things like that. Um, also, uh, visual schedules and directions we use a lot of times uh, here, especially in our Tech Connection program, which is um, ages 12 and up. And those are clients that need help with social um, communication and life skills. We use those, the visual directions a lot step-by-step -step recipes, step-by-step -step instructions for just about anything you can think of. Uh, another one is digital recorders, such as the voice cue or just a regular tape recorder um, to go ahead and um, give yourself reminders or directions or whatever you need to do and then play it, play it back. The visual and auditory cueing devices. And then there's a ton more of low-tech options. There are a ton of low-tech vendors. I included the ones that we use <coughs> the most. Uh, Enable Mart, Independent Living Aids, Therapro, LSNS Products, and Maxi Aids. And I included the uh, web links. There are just tons and tons and tons of really cool items. Um, on the page is a, re um, a picture of a reading guide, which is um, something you can put on a book or a paper that you're reading and it blocks out everything except for the line that you're reading and then it has a colored filter to read through that can be pink, blue, yellow, green, whatever works for you. And then the bold writer pen uh, for persons with low vision, it, it's kind of a good alternative to a Sharpie. It doesn't have that strong odor. Okay, time management tools. Time management is an issue for a lot of us, um, but especially those that are transitioning into um, either high school, college, the adult world. Um, and I just wanted to include some, um, just some ideas. Digital clocks for those who, who can't read a, a regular uh, analog clock. Uh, visual and auditory timers to remind you time to go or to pre-warn you, you have five minutes to get out the door. Uh, digital watches such as the Apple Watch, the Time Timer Watch, uh, which is a visual represent, um, representation of time, the Pebble Watch, uh, the WatchMinder is specifically made for persons who have attention issues and you can pre-program in short messages and it will vibrate. Um, and say things like pay attention or take your meds or, you know, class in five minutes, whatever you want to put in. And then, of course, there are talking and braille watches or clocks. I just wanted to mention a couple of visual reminder or calendar apps. There are so many out there. Um, by no means is this all of them. I just listed four that I use quite a bit. Um, the first one is called the Clear app. And there's a, a picture on the right and it just shows basically a schedule, 8.30 yoga class, 11 o'clock dentist appointment, 4.30 meeting Ellen. Um, basically, uh, sorry, that's the peak calendar. 
um, the Clear app basically is a list. You put in grocery shopping, whatever you want to do, and when you're done with it, you just slide to the left or to the right, and it either crosses it out or just deletes deletes it altogether. And there are little um, reminders that you can set that can ring or beep or buzz. Time Timer app is a visual represent, representation of time. So basically, it's a, a, a large circle that that counts down visually for those that can't tell time. And then the visual schedule planner is a little bit more complicated. Here's a screenshot, or two screenshots of it. Um, basically, you can program in daily, weekly, monthly, hourly, however you need to program your or, or the person you're working with today. So on the left side, we have Monday at 8.02. Um, there's, this is their evening, so they have chores at 7.30, free time at 8.30, bedtime at 9, and so on. Um, if they have chores and they need that chore broken down, they can click on chores and either see a film a video or a checklist. So on the right, there's laundry checklist. Sort the clothes, check the pockets, <laughs> add the clothes to the washer, set the temperature, and so on. So they can check off step by step what they need to do. Any questions up to this point? Laura, there's no questions in the chat box. Okay, moving on. Okay, on to reading supports. There are a ton of different kinds of reading supports. Uh, I'm going to just start with ebooks or audiobooks. So basically, electronic books or e-texts um, basically can provide an alternative to a traditional printed book or text for readers with learning disabilities, visual impairments, uh, physical disabilities where they can't hold a book or turn a page, um, and they can typically be downloaded from the internet uh, onto a computer or onto an iPad, and then they can either be read aloud using text-to-speech software, or you can read them yourself. Okay, we'll get there, Dior. So some ebook options include Learning Ally, Bookshare, Project, Gutenberg, and Lit2Go. Those are all sites that you can join and download books. Um, Project Gutenberg and Lit2Go are free. Learning Ally and Bookshare, you need to have subscriptions. Learning Ally is uh, actual uh, people that have recorded the books, so it's in a human voice, whereas Bookshare are typically um, text-to-speech type books. Um, just a couple ways to access it uh, other ways. The Kindle app is universal, and it works across all platforms. Uh, iBooks, of course, on the iPad, and then OverDrive, which in which you can download books from your local library. Um, it's available on all platforms, but different libraries have different software. Just some quick, um, just I wanted to talk just quickly about digital textbooks. Um, sometimes it's hard to find textbooks in a digital format. Um, you can find, you know, just reading books more easily, but a lot more people are doing digital textbooks, including Bookshare, iBooks, Kindle, and then there is a company called Course Smart, which is subscription-based. Um, one workaround for our um, students that need um, voice output that don't want to use 
um, a full-on screen reader like VoiceOver. On the iPad, you can actually highlight, touch, and drag and highlight um, whatever text you want to read aloud. And um, it'll go ahead and speak for you. Or you can actually do the whole screen, which is speak screen. Nice built-in features on the iPad. I just went ahead and um, kind of put the steps there for you so you could try it if you have an iPad. I use it a lot for my older students that want to read independently but might get stuck on a word or um, want that auditory feedback. Okay, so there are a ton of text-to-speech options um, depending on what you're looking to read, the computer, you know, the internet, um, digital books, it, it just depends on what you're looking for. I listed um, a few. Natural Reader, it, you can try for free. And it's kind of limited, but if you're not sure about a, a text-to-speech reader, that's kind of a good way to go because you can try it. Um, read Out Loud by Don Johnston is a very good screen reader. They actually use that for um, your Bookshare subscriptions. For blind and low vision students, JAWS, which stands for Job Access with Speech, is probably the most well-known um, screen reader. And then there's Window Eyes for those with visual impairments as well. Uh, on the app side for the tablet, one of my favorites is Voice Dream Reader. Um, Read to Go is an app that was created by the folks at Bookshare to read their uh, books. You can import other books as well. And then Natural Reader has a text-to-speech app that is free, or if you want the, the deluxe edition, it's $9.99. There's also a Google Chrome extension, if you're Google Chrome people, um, called Select and Speak. For Voice Dream Reader, it is highly customizable, so it can be used for anyone that's totally blind all the way through someone who has attention issues or dyslexia or reading issues. Um, there are 186 voices, 30 languages. Um, you can set the font size, spacing, color, um, background, foreground, the color it highlights. Um, you can highlight and pull out notes, and it reads any content. I haven't found any that it, it doesn't read yet. And um, you can speed it up, slow it down, make the text larger, smaller, the, um, the space between the lines larger, smaller. Very, very customizable. There's a free version, and then there's an upgraded version that's $9.99. Use this in a lot of situations. OK, text-leveled reading. This is kind of a neat uh, option for some of our students and some of my adults as well. Uh, Snap and Read by Don Johnston. You can either buy the software or there's a Google Chrome extension that you can download. What it does is it reads accessible and inaccessible text aloud. So if it's accessible text, you basically turn on Snap and Read, and you click near the text that you want to read, and a little speaker pops up, and it reads it. If it's text that is not accessible or that's in a, a picture or a different format, it has a, a cropping. It looks like when you're cropping a picture, basically you select the text that you want to read. It um, does a quick optical character recognition and then reads it allowed to you. Um, it works across, like, like the slide says, Google Drive, email, websites, um, Kindle, PDFs. And the neat thing is they have what's called dynamic text leveling. And so if, if they're reading something or you're reading something and not understanding it, you can click the text leveling tool and it will bring it down 
I'm going to switch screens really quick because there's an example on here. So the time traveler was expounding a, and recondite, a recondite matter to us. So if they click the text leveling, it says the time traveler was explaining an unknown matter to us. It's really a neat tool. Um, they do have a 30-day trial that you can download. And then there are built-in study tools where you can pull out text, and they have a bibliographer section that's really neat. Uh, another site that's, that's um, really amazing, which is uh, free, is called Newzella. And you can either access it through the website, or you can download their app. And it's all news articles. Um, they, they take daily news articles, just whatever's current, and they rewrite it at five different reading levels. So when you're online or on the app, you can just swipe your finger and it will make the text either easier or harder. And it goes from fifth grade reading level to twelfth grade reading level. If you want to go deeper, um, there are actually reading tests comprehension, and then there are quizzes that you can add as well. It's really a neat uh, website. So that's our sample of the Snap and Read. Okay. Another online tool that I like is called ReWordify. And basically, it's a free online reading comprehension software. And you can take uh, e-texts or internet articles or any document you want and cut and paste it in and hit rewordify. And it will simplify it for you. Um, there are different uh, tools and features built in. There's, um, it can highlight the words that, if, that it changed for you or not. Um, so the text on the left says, the ravenous throng scampered toward the delectable, I don't know that word, viands, which the chef had impeccably arrayed on the table. And then the understanding side says, the extremely hungry crowd ran toward the delicious food, which the chef had extremely well organized into rows on the table. So um, rewordify.com is the website, and it is very helpful. They also have a section that has uh, public domain books on it that you can open, and it will rewordify the whole book for you. Any questions on the reading section? Okay, on to writing supports. <coughs> One of the, some of the tools that I like to use a lot are contextual, contextual, it's early in the morning, contextual spell checkers. So basically these are programs that check the grammar, the spelling, and the punctuation in context of the sentence that you're writing, which is really important. So when you're using Microsoft Word or another program that has built-in spell check, it doesn't always catch your grammar. Uh, for example, um, which and which, or through, like through the ball, or I went through the tunnel, um, and then the two, two, and two, uh, things like that. All of these that are listed on here, which are Ginger, Grammarly, White Smoke Writer, and Got It, they all will do that for you. I personally use Ginger software. In fact, we got uh, all of our staff uses it on, on our um, computers. When you, ha you can do a free subscription to Ginger software. The only caveat is that you only get a certain number of months a certain number of corrections per month, and then it will start popping up saying, do you want to buy the, the full version? We went ahead and bought the full version. And um, because I have it, I can log into Ginger anywhere. I can use it on uh, 
through my Google Chrome on any computer, on my iPad, on anything that I do, which is really nice. Um, another Google Chrome extension is called Grammarly. Works very well. And then White Smoke Writer is an app and a Google Chrome extension. And then there's Got It, which is an app as well. Uh, here's just a kind of an example of Ginger. As you write R-I-G-H-T, it pops up the word W-R-I-T-E, live corrections. So you can do it one of two ways. You can keep it on, and it'll pop up and highlight and give you suggestions as you type. Or you can, if that's distracting, you can type everything and then go run it like a spell checker. It also has um, a really cool feature called a sentence rephraser. So if you're writing something and you feel like it's not it's what you want to say but not the way you want to say it, you can rewrite it. I use it a lot when I'm writing grants because I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again. Um, it has a great dictionary, synonym checker, I mean synonym function. Um, it will read aloud and it does have different language transla translation available. Again, you can get it as software and app a Google Chrome extension or a Safari extension if you're a Mac person. Okay. On to word prediction. So word prediction program, basically when we text we use word prediction probably um, most often. I don't know about you, but when I'm trying to text my phone predicts random words that I'm really not trying to say. Um, in, in this case, with the word prediction programs that I'm going to talk about, these are all specific. Um, they all predict words on the basis of what you're, what you're talking about. So <laughs> they're a lot more useful and a lot more helpful. So on the computer side, there is CoWriter Universal, which is amazing. You buy a, what they call a seat um, for so much a year. And you can log it through, log on through your Google Chrome, and use it on any computer anywhere you're at. Um, Read and Write Gold is by Text Help. Very good. Has uh, word prediction. Um, it has a lot of great built-in features, as does WordQ. On the app side, same, all the same or companies. Um, CoWriter. I read write and I word Q are all um, the app side of of the the software I'm talking about, and they're all available as Google Chrome extensions. Here's an example of CoWriter Universal. Um, one of the really cool features of this program is that it features topic dictionaries. So if you're writing about anything. Yes, whoever asked. Um, are these available if you don't have Google Chrome? Yes, you can buy just the software or the apps. Can, you can most of these apps no. be used in a work environment? Sure. I would say the ones with auditory feedback, you would want to have probably headphones. But other than that, I don't see why not. So with CoWriter Universal, no matter what you're writing about, you can you can load just a regular dictionary. They have all different dictionaries, or there are thousands of topic dictionaries. So whatever you're writing about, um, the example I have is on um, butterflies. So butterflies go through several stages of metamorphosis. So not a lot of people know how to spell metamorphosis. So if you put in if, you're, if you have your butterfly dictionary loaded and you start typing M, it's going to pop up those kind of words. There's also a word bank that you can pop up and stick on the side that have different words. If one of the words you want is on there, you can just click on that word and it will insert into your paragraph. They have another thing called flexible spelling, which is really great. Um, for some of my students that spell phonetically. So if you're typing in something and you're trying to put a word like um, a PH word, like pharmacist, and you're like, okay, and they put in an F, it's going to still predict 
the pH word. Um, it's available on different platforms. It's just a regular computer download, like just regular software download, Google Chrome extension, and also as an iOS application. They are working right now on um, the Android side. And also, um, there's one other thing. Oh, they're, they're trying to make some changes right now. Uh, I think it's going to be um, an even better tool than it is now. So note taking, I could probably do a whole webinar. There are so many different things out there. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple. If you have a specific thing that you're looking for, please email me and we can uh, go through it and I'll help you sort because there are just so many. I have about 1,150 apps and uh, 1,200 and something pieces of software, so I can, um, I can probably help you find something. Um, so the two note-taking apps I wanted to just mention are Audio Note, and basically it takes notes and you can record audio at the same time. You can insert pictures. Uh, there are different formats. Very, very useful. And the other one is called Notability. Uh, again, very similar to Audio Note. I um, have been using Notability lately at conferences where, where you get the handout, like the PowerPoint handout with the three lines on it where you can take your notes. I import it into Notability and just type right on the right on that handout, which has been really, really helpful at conferences. Another just really quick kind of a, a cheat is um, if there are a lot of notes up on the board um, and they have an iPhone or a tablet, um, there's nothing wrong with just snapping a picture of, of whatever's on the board and then you can go back and, and transcribe it or read it out later. Just a kind of a quick tip. Okay, on to math supports. So there are a ton of math supports and it just depends on um, what your student or your person is, is looking for. Um, we use uh, these uh, educational math apps. Um, there's a big collection and they also sell them in, they sell them individually and also in bundles. Um, the name of the vendor is iDevBooks, and each app is $3.99, and the bundles are about $9.99, depending on which ones you get. But they have um, math that starts with addition and goes all the way through different types of algebra. And what's been nice about these apps is they take you step by step by step. So I have a lot of older students that may have missed, they might be in, in pre-algebra or in algebra class, but they missed the foundations of multiplication. Or um, I had one that was, I think she's in 10th grade, and she missed, you know, because of health reasons, she missed the column subtraction. So every time she came to column subtraction, she didn't understand how to borrow carry and all that. So these apps are very, very helpful. They're step by step by step. And um, if you don't know how, you can hit uh, a button and the, it'll take you through and show you how to do it, which is really, really helpful. Um, another one is great. Khan Academy is a website. It is free. They do ask you to join. Um, it's still free, but to, to do a login so that you can do what they call customized learning, but you can go on as a guest, a guest as well. Um, they have over 4,000 videos on everything from arithmetic to physics to finance, history, um, yeah, sciences. Um, they have great test prep materials for the CASI, for the SAT, for different different standards. Um, everything is in video format. 
Thank you again, Tom. Many yeah. of them are captioned. Thank you. I don't honestly yes. know if they work, how they work with the screen reader. I don't know if they're described or not. Um, but if you go to khanacademy.org, it's free, and you can um, basically watch a professor um, teach a lesson on whatever subject it is that you're trying to learn. Equate, oh, Equate Formula Solver. This is, <laughs> this is a cool free app. And basically, you can solve just about any, any high up math, you know, physics or calculus or um, that sort of stuff. You can either put in your own problem or they will give you problems and it will break it down again step by step. And it'll it'll teach you, and then it'll turn around. Um, there's a learn it feature. It'll teach you, and then it'll ask you to put it to practice it. Really, really helpful. Yes, you will get the PowerPoint. Rosemary, will they get the PowerPoint? Okay. Uh, Math Pro. This is a similar app. And basically, this has tutorials, examples, and um, basically solves different kinds of, I hope they do, but I'm not sure. Um, basically, it takes you through, uh, starts with high school math and goes through um, calculus. So geometry, probability, statistics, pre-calculus, calculus, and algebra. Um, another nice, uh, helpful app. For people who can't read it. Socratic. This, this uh, is another app that's interesting. You can take a photo of your homework question, and it, it won't just solve it. <laughs> it will give you explanations, pull up videos on that type of a problem and show you where to go get, excuse me, where to go get support on that type of a thing. It works for math, science, history, English, and economics. And that's a free app. OK. Uh, on to living independently. Um, I just have a little blurb. Technology can help you operate the lights, TV, stereo, telephone, and open, close, and lock the doors all by using a single switch. Emergency alert systems can also be controlled from within an apartment, and many people now do their grocery shopping on the internet. So just some simple aids for daily living I wanted to mention. Um, there are items that help with uh, getting dressed or eating independently, such as a um, device that helps you hook your buttons, um, the button hook, or a universal cuff that you put a spoon or a utensil in, different types of adapted eating utensils. Um, we have a ton of different things here. If anybody's in the area and they want to come by, just make an appointment. Um, uh, can include things for rec recreation and leisure, like uh, reading a book. There's page turners and book holders and book stands. Um, there's a picture of a card holder for someone who can't physically hold a deck of, you know, a hand of cards. Uh, there are things for home living, uh, such as uh, modified door openers or lamp switches. And then there are some neat health monitoring things that are available now, like there's a watch that can detect seizures. And then there's a watch called the Diabetes Sentry that can um, monitor your glucose. Environmental control units or um, electronic aids for daily living. There are tons, of course, out there. I've been personally having fun with my, uh, I got the mini version of the Amazon Echo called the Dot. OK, 
can regional centers or the Department of Rehab, sorry, can regional centers or the Department of Rehab pay for these apps? That is a good question. Let me think about it. I would say if you were going to use them in your, like for Department of Rehab, if you were going to use them in your daily vocation, I wouldn't see why not. A lot of times the apps are a lot more uh, reasonable than software or other devices. It couldn't hurt to try. Um, sorry, back to um, ECU or EADL. Basically, there are tons now of these electronic devices that you can use with, um, with your voice. And I did a trial this weekend with five different augmentative communication apps to see if my uh, little Alexa dot would respond. And she responded to all of them. So I was pleasantly su surprised at that. Whoops, sorry. Um, so with things like the Amazon Echo, you can turn on, uh, if you hook it up to something called a Wemo, uh, which is a, a plug that plugs into a specific place, you can turn on your lights, you can operate your television, you can turn on the, tel um, sorry, on your, um, like your iHeartRadio or your Pandora or your, your music, um, you can ask different questions, it can Google things for you, it can set timers. Really, really helpful. I wanted to just mention the attainment company. I've been using their products for almost 20 years and they just keep getting better. They have software and apps specifically designed for life skills, social skills, daily living skills, um, safety. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this side. Hook what up, up to what? DOR says hook it up to what? <coughs> Can you be more specific? I'm sorry. Okay. Are you talking about the ECU? Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't show you the end. I can't hear. Okay, your echo. You said you could hook it up to something like Wemo. Okay. So, sorry, going back to the echo, you can, um, there's a Bluetooth connection that you can pair it to. It's called Wemo, W-E-M-O, and it looks just like a little plug that you can put, um, for example, in a specific spot that may have a lamp or something plugged into it. And um, you just pair it, it's Bluetooth, and, or you, and then you plug the lamp or whatever into it, or, or a fan or whatever it is you want to run, and then you can say, um, Alexa, turn on the light, or Alexa, turn on the fan. Does that make sense? Oh, no problem. Sorry. It's really awesome. We're having fun with ours. Anyway, um, sorry, back to Attainment Company. They have wonderful software and um, applications. I included some of the ones that we use. The Read to Learn um, Hello. app and software includes life skill Hello. readers, Hello. social Hello. story readers, and safety skill readers. And they're all very uh, rich and, and aimed toward older students or adults. And they cover things like the safety one, safety skills reader, covers everything from medicine cabinet safety. Check out Attainment Company. All of their um, apps have free versions that you can download that are just like one little section. Basically, for Attainment Company, they have everything from functional math, which is awesome. Um, they have money math uh, called dollars and cents, where you can go in and learn to count money, 
you can, uh, they have shopping where you spend money, you have a wallet and you spend money. Um, you have to find, find the things on your shopping list and then spend the money. And then they have one in the dollars and cents bundle in which you are the cashier. So that's a very nice um, piece of software and app. They also have a community success, social success, personal success, which is things like hygiene, brushing your teeth, putting on deodorant, shaving, and then one called computers at work. Um, really nice, um, helpful software and apps. This is my favorite website. It's called GCF Learn Free. It's www.gcflearnfree.org. And when you first go on, it's a little overwhelming because there are just hundreds and hundreds of topics. And they have tutorials on just about everything you can think of. They have um, everyday life, which um, we use a lot here with our kiddos and our older students. Um, can work on using an ATM, telling time, filling out job applications, um, money skills, shopping, um, using a microwave, just everyday things, taking a, a bus, reading a bus schedule, things like that. There's also c computer tutorials like email, social media, internet, and then specific tutorials on Microsoft Office and um, Snapchat and <laughs> different uh, types of social media. And then there's a career section where they have um, career planning. You can practice interview skills, filling out, again, like job applications, writing your resume. Really, really helpful. The only, and it's all free, the only caveat is it does not work on the iPad because some of the, the lessons are flash-based. Uh, the other thing on this website is you can go through for each topic and you can print out or save to PDF um, tips and handouts that have to do with that subject. Really super helpful. Okay, employment. Again, not all this stuff has to do with employment, but I with employment, but I tried to categorize. So, um, choosing a job and identifying what needs to be done to perform is the first step. Once you know what needs to be done to perform the job, technology can be found to help support. For example, an amplified phone could help you to serve customers in a mail order by phone job if you had a hearing loss. And there is an, a picture of an amplified telephone. So um, some hearing accommodations might include, there are all kinds of things for hearing impairments, uh, alerting devices, uh, like uh, for the telephone, for the doorbell. Uh, there are devices you can wear. Um, there are bracelets that vibrate, the li lights that flash. Um, my favorite one is the alarm with the bed shaker. It's a little disc that goes under your pillow. And um, when the alarm goes off, it shakes you. I think they should put these in all teenagers' rooms. I know I would love to have one for mine. Maybe one that ejects them out of the bed would even be better. But um, the bed shaker is pretty, a pretty neat thing. Um, of course, television, closed caption decoders, things like that. Um, chat. Software can be very helpful for those with a hearing impairment as um, a way to communicate. Uh, of course, assistive listening devices. And then there is a good, uh, a really neat device called the UBI Duo. It's U-B-I-D-U-O. And it, there's a picture of it at the bottom of uh, this slide. And basically, it looks like an old uh, word processor or portable word processor. And there are two of them that you kind of face each other and type. So as you type on one, it shows up on the person facing you. It shows up on theirs. 
and vice versa so that it's a way to chat if you don't know sign language or so you don't have to write write you know write on paper uh, very uh, awesome system we do not have one because they're a little bit pricey but if you want to try one out they're typically at the CSUN conference. I don't know if you guys know about the CSUN conference, but that's in San Diego at the end of this month. And you can visit the exhibits there, the exhibit halls, for free and try out a lot of this technology and see what might be helpful. And the exhibits are open to the public on um, March 2nd and 3rd. And if you want information, just hit me up. Um, another thing that's really helpful, specialized telephones. They have so many telephones now with uh, large buttons or with pictures where you can just put the person's picture and press that and it'll dial. Um, amplified telephones, caption telephones, um, braille or TTY um, telephones, uh, some that you can voice dial. And I put a couple of resources at the bottom, CaliforniaPhones.org, and then the, the website to the CPUC um, on there as well. Really nice options for persons that are deaf or hard of hearing or blind or um, physically impaired. Assistive listening devices can be really helpful for someone who's hard of hearing or who has auditory processing issues. They come in all different um, ways and different formats, but the idea is that um, they can amplify the sound of speech and filter out all the background noises. Uh, a good example would be in a movie theater. You could put um, an assistive listening device uh, like headphones on your head so you can hear the, the movie directly into your um, headphones and it filters out all the popcorn chewing and people talking and, and that sort of thing. Sorry, I clicked on, on accident. Um, they, like, again, they come as simple as, as headphones. They have Bluetooth now. They have some that will hook up um, directly to your hearing aids. Um, lots of really great, great features. If you're speaking and somebody is, just as a tip, and somebody has, um, uh, if you're talking directly into somebody's ear, remember to turn off your microphone when you go take a break. I did that on accident once. Never do it again. Okay. Next, uh, vision enhancement. Uh, vision accommodation options might include um, screen magnification software and apps. There are just tons that are out there. Um, text to speech software and apps. Optical, like we talked about earlier, optical character recognition software in which you scan, scan in your document on a, some sort of a scanner then the software turns around and um, processes that and turns it into editable text that can be read aloud. Um, there are CCTVs and portable magnifiers, um, talking dictionaries, large print or talking calculators, large print keyboards, enlarged cursors for someone with low vision. A lot of times if you make that cursor larger, so they can find it, that's super helpful. The pictures on here are a large, large in size and large print calculator, um, a large cursor, and then a um, handheld magnifier. So some screen magnification um, vendors. The most popular software is probably Magic by Freedom Scientific um, or also ZoomText, depending on um, 
who you are. It's kind of like a Coke and Pepsi type thing, depending on what you like. A uh, screen magnifier does just that. It makes the icons and things on the screen larger. If you're not used to it, it can make you a little bit seasick um, because it typically enlarges a portion and when you move when you move the magnifier around, sometimes it can make you a little, I don't know, sick to your tummy until you get used to it. There are a couple free downloads that I put on there, the Iconico magnifier and the virtual magnifying glass. Those are both um, pieces of software that you can download to try out. And also there's free magnification built right into your Windows and Macintosh operating systems. And again, if you have questions on that, just um, shoot me an email. So different kinds of magnifiers out there. There are desktop magnifiers or CCTVs, which are those large machines in which you, you then have a, a large monitor that looks like a TV or an old computer screen or a computer screen and you put the document or book or whatever you're trying to read under this camera and it shows up on the screen and you can manipulate it. There are also tons of portable handheld magnifiers out there now and I've noticed they've come uh, way down in price which is wonderful. Um, and then there's a couple apps that you can download to your iPhone or your, um, your iPad that work in a pinch. <laughs> uh, I listed a couple. There's the super fast mirror three in one. I think it's a couple dollars. And then there's one called the magnifier text zoom 30 times that is free. And sometimes they'll help you out in a pinch if you're somewhere and don't have a magnifier or can't read really tiny font. I just wanted to mention some helpful apps for persons with visual impairments. There's, um, it's changed names a few times, but there is um, the Nant Mobile Money Reader that's free. And basically you download the app and you use your uh, telephone, your, your phone or your iPad's built-in camera and um, just wave a, any kind of a bill in front of it and it'll tell you orally what that bill is. So that's really helpful. There's another one that's a little more complicated called the LookTel Recognizer, same company. It's $9.99 and it's similar in which you can you use the camera, but um, it can identify cans, packages, ID, credit cards, DVDs, anything with a, um, a barcode. Um, it's really amazing. It, uh, it's really helpful in the grocery store, things like that when you're trying to find out if a can is a can of peas or corn or whatever that is. So that's kind of a helpful um, app in a pinch. And they're both made by LookTel. Okay, any questions? Do you have questions, specific questions? always um, feel free to email me. My email is laurafm at taskca.org. Can senior citizens who have disabilities get access to the free app? Well, free apps anybody can get access to. You just download them. A, poly, a poly vision is amazing. It can identify anything. Green pen, hot dog, text. Oh, do you have the, the link for that? Can you put it in the chat box? I love new tools. Okay, I have a consumer that's blind but insists on using an old flip phone <laughs> so that he can feel the buttons. However, I'm seeing there are lots of apps that would help him. Opinions. Hmm. Well, it depends what he's trying to do, what he wants to do. Um, if you want to email me, we can chat about it. If you want to be like specific, that would probably be the best. Is your consumer older, the one that wants to use the flip phone? Good idea. 
have him go to the Department of Rehab. Again, my email is up, up here, laurasm at taskca.org. Thank you so much, everybody.